go to to make a shit film just to <laughs> oh, make a good one later well it, this is at the moment the every single film that's coming out is shit and i'm just waiting for the good ones uh have you watched nimona on netflix no i no a plus i don't like on things about illnesses pneumonia is something i'm quite quite scared of <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I was I was gonna say though, um, there's a bit of a furor going up right now because there's a <laughs> a movie that was written. James Gunn was one of the co-writers, I think. Um, Coyote versus Acme. Okay. That is a full movie. It's done, but oh, it's because. Bold, well, because, like, Netflix and various, you know, distributors didn't offer enough money, uh, the production company is going to just delete it, because they save more money that way by being able yeah, to use to it as a it tax off. write-off. And that Apparently is the... complete bullshit. The... I, uh, was it... I think it was Batgirl movie and Batwoman's a series, but the, the, the whole fucking shit over that apparently that was quite a good movie that was near enough done if not done and then they yep. just binned it for tax reasons and the thing that pisses me the most off about that is that could have been really good but they fucking canned final fucking space in that and final space was amazing 
absolutely amazing how dare they make me cry over cookies. <laughs> All right. Terrible so behavior. I want today to start us off for today's show by talking about democracy. No. Um, Uh-oh. Sorry, I've, I've been playing way, way too much Helldivers 2. Uh, no, I was going to say, and Ow. I was actually going to say this to uh, to YouTube before we started the show, but we were, you know, talking, so I didn't have a chance. But with any luck, um, with any luck, we won't get raided by the Astro Pub tonight, so we won't have to, like, try and be professional for, for full, like... However the fuck long we I'm do this. not in the mood for that. I'm not in the mood for that. I'm not. I'm not. I can't do it. <laughs> You're not in the mood for what? Being a normal, well-adjusted human for strangers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got I got good news for you, Shiver. None of us have ever been that. <laughs> so. We've never been that ever. So uh... hello, hello to anyone that's here. Good Hello. to have you. Um, we'll We're we'll relay. talk. A... This is our station. Yeah, we are the longest running Star Citizen Mantraka. podcast. Montraga. Hello. We are the longest running, and it's absolutely great for our cardio. <laughs> uh, did anyone? This is this is completely off topic and weird. Uh, did anyone learn anything interesting this week? Like a, a fun factoid. I think it did. Yeah, really probably. I've been watching QI. QI is Perfect. amazing. I love QI. It is pretty amazing. It's great. I love it. My only problem um, with QI is there can only be one QI host. It's Stephen Fry. That's it. Stephen Fry was very good, but so I, I think Sandy talks fake. She's found this um, niche. She's, she's pretty good. She's pretty good. Yeah. That woman has not fucking aged either. I remember her when <laughs> I was a fucking kid on the TV doing kids shows, and it's like, you look exactly the same. What is your <laughs> secret? She's a vampire. Zombies. I can't think um, of a fact, but I, I I'm just gonna say it that when um when you were a kid, at least in the UK, they like to stick you on this fucking long run, cross country run. It's not proper length cross country, but it's a fucking long time for a fucking kid. Like like that is your day of school is you're supposed to run, and of course only the fucking really sporty kids run it, and you're like yeah, fuck off. And you just want to go and have a fucking cigarette in a fucking bush and listen to some metal <laughs> or something like that while all these cunts walk past you. And you don't care, because who cares? It's cross-country. You just walk it. But when you think about it, right, basically, you your parents have sent you to this institutional building to be under the care of these people, these strangers. It, you know, you very rarely know. Your parents don't know. You don't know on any kind of personal level. And they just say, right, okay, Run into the fucking woods on your fucking own for miles. Along the way, come back to here. And if you survive, well done. Stragglers, though, you were the weak ones. You've been weeded out. <laughs> but that is what it comes down to, is just like run into the woods without any guidance or adults around you, and let's see what happens. Who the fuck thought that was a good idea? Sure, that is a fantastic analog for life, because that's exactly what happens. It's like, oh, you've graduated school? Fuck off into the woods with you. Good luck. It it works like that because I I censored it very heavily for Twitch broadcast standards. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's my factoid because I there was another one I had, but I, I can't remember it right now. Um, but uh, there was yet another eruption in Iceland. Oh, yes, and that is a satellite picture. Of the area. It's scary. It's uh, it's apparently threatening a bunch of stuff too, right? Like it cut off a bunch of it, water uh, pipes. Unfortunately, this one was, was... It finally got it. Um, 
It's the thing they've been worried about the whole time. Yeah, the the lava intersected one of the hot water pipes that feeds like 20,000 people or something. Um, hot water. And unfortunately in Iceland, at least if it's, at least if those people's houses match what I saw when I was there, um, your hot water is your heat as well. So you have no hot water, no heat, which yeah. is pretty bad in the winter in Iceland um, where it's dark like 20 hours a day. Can I? Oh, well, I know my factoid. Actually, hey, yeah. Flo, Uh I've got a. I've got a fact. I have got a factoid. Yeah, I think Iceland's mostly geothermal. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and okay, this particular to... plant is geothermal. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, the uh, in Giza, near the Great Pyramids, there is an animal stat, massive animal statue on display. What kind of animal is it? Cat. No. Sphinx? No, it's not a sphinx, but it is called a sphinx. A sphinx is actually Greek, and it was about 5,000 years before the Sphinx of Giza was constructed, and it's half woman, half... Oh, shit, it's got wings, and I can't remember the animal body. It's three things. And uh, it's meant to be... It's meant to be... It's meant to ask you questions. I don't I really believe in D&D. &D. I believe in D and D. One of the old versions, they had a sphinx as a yeah monster. They did. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's like the. It looks very much like the Oracle in a Neverending Story, which they never made a cool. sequel to because they had to shut it down after the amount of lawsuits they received. Ah uh, yes. Yeah, what? from Lionel Hutz. Who? Oh my God! What? Lionel Hutz, attorney at law. I'm waiting the about lawyer 30 in the, years in the to make Simpsons. this joke. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my god. I don't get it, and that's okay. Um, Would it help if I said his name was Miguel Sanchez, then? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Man, I haven't uh, seen my... ever new story since, like, I was a kid. My factoid... Now the theme um, song is in your head. So... It's, uh, I'm in Ottawa, for anyone that doesn't know. And yesterday in Ottawa, it was, I think, seven degrees. We only hit a mm -hmm. low of two degrees, which yep. is the warmest January 9th that Ottawa has had since records began in 1873. I'm sorry, but it's February. <clears throat> what did I say? You said January 9th. Oh, yeah, February. Um, anyway, it's uh, we've had, like, plus degree weather all week this week. And it's February, which is when we're normally sitting at, like, minus 30 real degrees. I'm Canadian. We do everything real except for... Yeah. All the what a way to do. ask that except question. For, except for all the things we don't do real, which is a lot. It's Maybe mostly... units are an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> we use real measurement for speed. Yes. And distance. And temperature. As long as it's a long distance and temperature, unless it's the temperature of a pool. Oven, of, or an oven. <laughs> or an oven. Yeah. We use, <laughs> we use fake measurement for ovens and pools we use fake measurements for building like i i build everything in feet and inches even though we yep. use <laughs> um we use liters for almost everything except most recipes that we use to use american <laughs> conversions so we have depends where yeah. you are i think it's, we mostly wait, it... we mostly use metric here I, yeah. I still find it wild that one of the measuring ingredients in America is a cup. Yes, like, what, a oh, cup? Yeah, we use a measuring cup. All right, what size a fucking measuring cup? Because I have multiple measuring cups here. Do you want me to bring out the oh, yeah. fucking barrel? Shiver. Do you want a Shiver. barrel of yeast in this fucking thing? You can't. We use, we use cups. It's Fuck you milliliters. and your fucking cups. We use cups over milliliters. Well, why? Well, oh, well, that just answers that question. Okay, a cup is two hundred. We use grams. <laughs> That's for, why, like, see, see, you know, see, the problem here is, 
it, it was a problem. Absolutely, it was a problem, Shiver. It was definitely a problem. Thankfully, somebody eventually was like, fuck, this is a big problem. Well, how big a cup? Then they went, you know what? We're just making 250 milliliters. That's the size of the cup. <laughs> we were good after that. <laughs> Yeah, we use. I also just need to ask, what's the name of what? How do you say the name of the place you live again? Ottawa. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'll have you know. I'll hey. I'll have you know that Ottawa has just do, put up do, a do, job do. posting. Ottawa has just put up a job posting for six figures for someone to become Ottawa's night mayor to revitalize our nightlife. Can I? I feel like you are are the fucking Ottawa nightmare. (laughs) Can I? Can I do that? And I'll live. I'll I'll live in a corner of your basement, and you'll never even know that. that No, let's do it. Except when I come to play Mario Kart with you. <laughs> Hang on, Mud Trucker. More important question. They say that one glass of red wine a day is good for you. How large of a glass am I allowed here? Because I have a glass that is the size of a bottle. <laughs> they do not say that here, at least. Anyway. That, by by our definition... Yeah, d- d- yeah, but do they do it in, like, fucking American? Like, oh, yeah, it's like... Two and a half cups of wine are good for you. And it's like, who the fuck drinks wine? You're now saying that no alcohol is good for you of any uncouth. Yeah. The the reg- the rules here say if you have a drink a day or a drink on more days of the week than you don't have a drink, then you're an alcoholic. That's the baseline for alcoholism. So four days a week. Yeah, if you drink four days a week, you're an alcoholic. Can can I just roll this over and just get fucking smashed on Friday night? Like, absolutely mullered. And then just, like, roll it over. Also, if you have any more than three in a sitting, you're an alcoholic. All right, so three what? That doesn't seem like the actual definition. I need proof. Three what? Because, again, you know... Three bottles of Jack Daniels is very different from three bottles of beer. <laughs> it is very different. <laughs> I guess. Um, uh... um, I think you'll find, Mud Trucker, that in, Aus- in Australia they say they couldn't give a Castle Main Forex for anything else funny there's like <clears throat> under that definition there are there are almost n- no non-alcoholics in ireland or Scotland. or italy or i think you'll find places. i think you'll find that that definition kind of extends universally <laughs> to be honest with you there are lots of people here who don't drink um but yeah there's also lots of people who do <laughs> if you know what i mean Dun, 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 dun. I don't. Apparently, so, I don't believe you should drink okay. and fly spaceships. You know Talking of spaceships, we should. Yeah, we should go to spaceships. I suppose. Weakest segue ever. Weakest segue ever. I guess we'll talk about spaceships. God damn it! <laughs> I mean, I'm. Look, this uh, week's okay. You know what? I'm going to preface this by saying one. I didn't. Oh, oh, we go. I got one. I got a way. I got. I got a fucking way to do this. I got. I got okay. a really smooth okay. way to do this. Right? Okay. No one's going to notice this segue. All right? No one's going to notice okay. these last no, no, ten no. seconds. Yeah. It's going to be completely right. All right. So I'm a bit of a fan of Warhammer. In case you don't know, I was watching uh, Chapter Master Valric the other day because you know something to do while you paint, and he's quite funny. Um, but anyway, he was mentioning um, that this fan-made video the cockpit of the spaceship looked very much like some space game and he said oh what game was it what game was it no not elite dangerous then someone said star citizen he's like oh yeah star citizen you know what i paid into that like because he's northern i paid into that like 10 years ago and i ain't heard an out since and it's like you're trapped to fast a fucking valrag how do you not know what the state of fucking star citizen is talking of the state of star citizen <laughs> I like well segue. 
Excellent, excellent segue, yeah. Had nothing to do with alcohol, so I guess I, I actually have to disqualify it, but well done. He's northern. Oh, yeah, fair. Oh, okay. There you go. Done, solved that one. Yeah, you're right. from Manchester. <laughs> now that I've. How does he, of all people, not know about it when he's in Manchester? Probably walks back. Oh, look at that bloody building. I paid into that 10 years ago. They don't do shit. I don't know why it's um, in Yorkshire now, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> so where was I? Okay. Um, okay, I want to You know, it's bad, this. Mud Trucker, right? I, I've got to tell this one because it's fucking hilarious. I'm sorry. <laughs> Total sidetrack, but it's, it's Mud Trucker's fault. There's only four of us here. It's fine. Three of them are us. So it's just you, us and Mud Trucker, all right? So when you're going from where I live, which is south near enough up north you get to the point where you get to birmingham and birmingham is like you know oh you go the osborne that's too far anyway you went to pass there, birmingham that's okay oh, or you get to birmingham and it's like don't go to birmingham it's just it's birmingham your choice is now a birmingham or the north and that's it it's like that is the point of no return once you pass birmingham it's just like the north Oh but, no! But hang, on. hang on, isn't there a point of the north? Because once you get past north, you get to Scotland, and shit's better there. No, it's just north. It's north all the way up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't think the Scottish would like saying that, but well, the Scots are north, right? But yeah. the lowland Scots aren't as north as the highland Scots. And the highland Scots have got nothing on the fucking Shetland Isles who shit on everyone. Right. And after like some penguins. So Star Citizen. They don't play Star Citizen. Probably penguins. must. Are you sure? Cause no, I'm... they're just based on the Avenger. <laughs> hey, Darsh. So two people want, are watching. We're nearly outnumbered in the chat. I want to preface this by saying that this week's episode was a good episode. I really like when CIG do like give us closer looks at well, at, honestly, at groups that let's be honest, none of us even really knew were a group. <laughs> yeah. If Very you if you I would have had a hard time naming the ones this week, I think. If someone had asked me, what are all the groups of devs? Probably wouldn't yeah. miss these ones. <clears throat> Which is, I like it when they do this. It, it, like, Darge, what you're saying, I love lore. lore. Yeah, lore is great. Um, <sighs> but people want their shiny ships. And people want talk of what's coming next. And people like us, who have to fill an hour and a half of time, uh, instead fill 20 minutes with talk about alcohol and whatever the hell else we were talking about. Because the North. The North. The North. Uh, because... Well, there wasn't that much this week when it comes to actual content, you know? Um, but it was very interesting. Uh, oh, yeah, units of measure, that's right. <laughs> anyway, um, it's good. But, oh, the tip is here, too. Hey, tip. We are now outnumbered. Hey, this tip. is perfect. Um, we need to be outnumbered. Know, it's it's but, important. It, it is. Before we, we go into what I wanted to talk about, we should actually talk a little bit about the lore. Because Star Citizen does have very interesting lore. It's a great story. And I personally love universes that make up, you know, okay, here's Earth history, and here's where Earth history, we start making this shit up. And let's see where we get. Like, Star Trek. Are we going to have World War Three starting, what is it, this year that it's supposed to start? 2024? I really hope not. When does it, it start the, in Star especially Trek? Especially not the World War Three that happened in Star Trek. 
Because, oh boy. I'm, they, I'm not entirely sure with World War Three, but I think it was the 90s. But then it's also easy to get it confused with the eugenics war. Right. Sorry, you're right. producers might have done. The Irish is right. In 2024 is the Irish unification. Uh, tw- World War Three in uh, in Star Trek ha- starts in 2026. 2026, ah, right? Was it, so was it the eugenics last, war then? Last for 27 years. <laughs> <laughs> I oh boy. So as long as Ireland doesn't unify this year, we're set. <laughs> we're good. We're good. We're not on the Star Trek timeline. <laughs> So Ireland, like, if you're gonna do it, just just wait a year, please. Like, <laughs> um, that's true. The Romulans have been the Romulans the have been fucking with the timeline. The Borg too. They tried. Uh, oh, not yet though. Not yet though. Still some time. Matt, They're I saw a great in, like, forty years. I saw a great meme that was like, um, what's the Borg queen's name from that one Star Trek movie? Alice Krieger. Someone. Krieger? Whatever. Or, it was yeah. it's two two images, right? The top one is like one of the friggin' 60s, 70s McDonald's, like the red roof and like the color everywhere. And then the bottom one is one of the new McDonald's, like the the it's a brown box with some more brown on it, and then there's some more brown... Like the new McDonald's is, are ugly. And there's her there being like something about it was a borgism i don't know borgisms but like resistance is futile <laughs> yeah insinuating that you know yeah i like color yeah mcdonald's so, were a lot more fun when we were kids yeah with the friggin' play sets and like the the trees that's we are way off track holy fuck okay um no, I think we're right where we're supposed to be, David. <laughs> it's what really I to, <laughs> What I wanted to say was uh, it's true. Like Star Citizen, we think <laughs> You know what I've realized? <laughs> um McDonald's nuggets are shit compared they to are, Burger King's. Really bad. Burger King's nuggets are significantly better taste-wise, not as good texture-wise, but they're also, like, less than a buck each, whereas McDonald's nuggets, it's, like, six for ten bucks. I can get, like, eight nuggets for five bucks at Burger King. McDonald's fries used to be really, really good when they were using beef tallow to fry them in. Now they use vegetable, and it's shit. Uh, But... In Japan, McDonald's fries are still good. Burgers are all right because it's all freshly made to order, but Burger King is better. Hmm. But then, if you you know that if if you want to eat brands that you know, go with that. But Loteria is it's best to just walk in. Loteria is really good. Loteria. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm I'm really big fan of Segways. Um. Speaking of segways, you know, I, I've got a question. No, no, genuine question. I'm a really big fan of segways, and I do have a genuine question. Are there segways in Star Citizen? Yes. Do you know what happened the- to the guy who invented segways? Yes, he drove off a cliff on a segway and died. <laughs> Why am I saying be- that like that I'm is excited? the best? That's the best factoid about segways. <laughs> is that the creator of the Segway died driving off a cliff on a Segway? <laughs> so, um... Star Citizen lore. Star Citizen lore is great in theory. There's a lot of it there. They've made up, you know, hundreds of years of history, and they've got dedicated writers that have been doing hundreds for of years of history yeah. for over a decade. The problem really is they don't give it to us in an easily consumable fashion or in a fashion that's like organized or chronological like it's just oh this month here's a thing 
on some lore stuff. Hope you read this one from six months ago, because... Like, it's just all disjointed, and I really wish they'd organize their lore a bit. Which is interesting, because I actually remember... <laughs> longest running Star Citizen podcast. Um, years ago... Years ago, CIG were trying to... Had a job posting for an author to write a Star Citizen novel. I applied. Okay. I didn't succeed, but I'm wondering if anything ever came of that. Because a novel, a well-written novel, would be a really interesting way to do Star Citizen lore. Like, you could have even a series of novels, like, about the Messers and that whole, like, there could be some really interesting Star Citizen novels that tell the lore of the universe. Yep. Um, as long as... <sighs> fucking... There are two books that convinced me that I could write a book. One was... Oh, I can't even remember the name. It's... Everyone lists... The Atlas! Like one of the... No, everyone lists it as, a, as like one of these great fantasy oh, novels. Oh, the dictionary! That's it, just it a fucking list of words. Horrible. Everyone knows what's in the dictionary, <laughs> and we know most, how it ends. Actually, actually, sure, most people don't, and that's the problem. Um, but one of the other books that made me convinced that I could write a book was there were three tie-in novels to Mass Effect, and they were atrocious. And it was like, this is such an opportunity for good lore books. And it was like, wait, this is written by the guy, the head writer from Mass Effect. And this is shit. But the writing in you Mass know, Effect's really good. I can only think of one company that successfully launched a book series that Ed actually Williams propelled the their Lord product Chair. forward. Shit. Much, much further than ever before. Can't see anything. It's all cut out. Sure. There you go. Ooh. Well, Hipterius, they do have an this ice was, archivist. This was twenty years. Sure. I think this that was twenty was, year I book series. I think he was being. Oh yes, I see or... the I see the things at the end now. Yeah. Yeah. Like they have an archivist, I... and it would be I'm... really nice that. If I'm they... pretty sure that most of the stuff that they're doing is not going to be, isn't even being given to us, to us at all. I think a lot of it's going to be in game. Yep. <clears throat> but I would like, sorry, I, I mean, I, I don't think like it's a... going to be posted on, like, I don't think it's going to be posted on their website. I think most of what they're building is going to be many years of in game stuff. But they can only do in game stuff going forward. They can't really tell some of the past stories as well in game why not because i don't want to go to a library and read every single fucking book in the no, library you go to, to... A, you go to a museum and you look at all the things the destroyed ships and then write a book about it and then hang on no, no 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 write a book about it sell it in paperback but also put the book in game that you can read on your mobile glass. Seriously. That's long awesome. flight. You've got a long flight. Open up your mobile glass. Oh, here. Like, just like a Kindle. It's right where you were last time. Just keep reading. I like it. I like it. Do it. How hard would it be to add a Kindle app to the mobile glass? We're good. Let's do it. It would be easy. Come on. That would be really easy. Yeah, it wouldn't even be hard. No, I don't think it'd be hard at all. Quick. Someone send this idea to CIG. I want the um, audio book version, and uh, I want Astro Pub to have uh, get the uh, recognition for this because I want every audio book read by Melissa Estrada. Says the Astro Pub. <laughs> You're gonna get us in trouble with him. Uh, again. What? Are... what? Again. The three people that are here watching us that are very much in on the ongoing joke. Um. No, but okay. Um, Another side topic that would actually be kind of interesting because imagine, I mean, oh, you got a question. AI is bad, and lots of the uses that people are finding for AI are bad. 
um, there's genuine reasons to worry about AI taking people's jobs for a lot of things up to and including voice acting and the ability to mimic people's voices through AI. That said, it would be really neat to be able to program AI to be able to read novels as a screen reader based on someone who has consented voice. Anyway. Uh, I think she, I don't even know if she's still with the company at this point, but she was QA team, bug testing team. I think she's still there. Technical so animator two in, at um, CIG. Worked in a German studio. Yeah, still there, according to LinkedIn. There you go. Yeah, LinkedIn. I don't trust LinkedIn. I don't trust LinkedIn either, but I've started using it because I have to. Anyway, um, okay, we're we're half. God, we're only a half hour in. <sighs> wow, that's a real wow! What enthusiasm we're in. Thanks for thanks in. for being so excited to be here. <laughs> Jesus no, no, Christ! What a I'm cunt! Oh, fuck you both. I'm excited to be here. I just don't know what the fuck to talk about. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited about, to be here. It's only been 30 <laughs> minutes. Um, I, there is, I think, a really... Um, uh, character interactions in video games have been mediocre to shit for a long time because there's only so much you can write. There's only so much you can write, and then only so much you can voice, and only so many people you can get to voice the characters. If there could be a decent, um, like, pay scheme organized for a voice actor to lend their voice to AI, to then use that AI to allow for in-game answers using AI, using their voice, to allow for some customization of answers... That would be both interesting and possibly really good. But um, it's a whole speaking uh, heavily related. Uh, you did you hear that? Uh, was it Ubisoft Montreal uh, selling? No, not Ubisoft. I can't remember the name of the company selling off um, Deus Ex license. I do. And the voice. Ah, the vo no, no, they sold it on to someone else. Since? Uh, Eidos got bought by Embracer, I think, and then Embracer had a bunch of shit releases That's and it. are in trouble and are now selling all of the shit yeah. that they bought. Um, because they, they Embracer. Embracer sold it off, and the voice actor for Adam Jensen came out and said, you know, that it's shit. The industry right now, the video game industry, is a bit shit right now. It's terrible. Yeah. I'm okay. I've got other jobs lined up, but I know other people that aren't okay. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, we, there's a very big problem and in video games and in other things, and it's one that we don't know how to solve. Um, but there's this ongoing trend of, you know, companies making record profits, video game companies making record profits, Activision, Blizzard, Microsoft making record profits, and still laying off 1,400 people. 2,000 people. Uh, a major telecom in Canada, Bell, just laid off like 7,000 people after posting, guess what? Record profits. Because you know what happens when they lay people off? They get to they make more money. cut that those payments, that, that, um, like that salary off their Yeah, their, their profit goes up. Their profit goes Very up. Simple. And, then, and then they, you know, hire it out to India and or China or Or wherever. just degrade their service. Like, that's usually yeah. what they do. They're just like, yeah. fuck it. We'll just won't do as good a job anymore. But they're like, <laughs> that's way and, and it's really, really evident in video games because there are no, basically no unions in video games and video game yeah, companies work, work, work on such an ephemeral basis where, oh, yeah. You're you're done coding the engine for our game. Okay, bye. Well, like CIG... video games have always occupied this very strange space in the media. 
You know, they're, they're not recognized as artistic creations the same way that movies are recognized as artistic creations, which, you know, I to me and I think to everyone here is fucking insane. But, for but, starters. Even, but even they're, movies... they're not they're not respected. You know, yeah. it, it's far as the, the industry you know whatever concept that is video games are just shit on you know it's kids toys still in in the wider world even though everyone and their fucking mum is playing a video game at some point in their life well it's really interesting because video games make more money than movies Mm. video games are a bigger industry but even movies yeah it's a more personal experience isn't it it's a more one-on-one experience a video game you know a single player you play mass effect you've experienced this yeah but even in film there's a huge problem where most films now are using a ton of 3d animation and the 3d animators are paid pennies because if you won't animate it for the pennies then this guy will Right, so it's the problem like, is and this. You're seeing this across the industry. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go. And you're just seeing this across the industry, and it happens over and over. You see with AI too. The biggest problem is that they think that they can take these shortcuts, and the problem is that they can't. It doesn't actually work. People are too good at recognizing when you're doing shenanigans, and you don't make money doing it. So what you end up doing is you cut a whole bunch of jobs and you try and use AI or, 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 you know, crappy animators or something for it. And then your product sucks. And so you'd make no money. So you have to fire a bunch more people. <laughs> Look at, <laughs> and, and it's not, it's not just like firing people, making shitty product, make more people. It's there's someone at the top that has decided this is the way it's going to be like, mm-hmm. look at Redfall. Someone, at the top of that studio said Renfall is going to be a live service game. I, d- d- don't forget the extra step on top of that. It's not just this guy, you know, it's it's, it's not just evil Monopoly monocle guy. Even though, Did you know the guy in Monopoly doesn't have a monocle? Anyway, um, it's not just one guy who's there, this top of this pile of money using orphans tears to fucking make his <laughs> coffee or something like that. It, that is the case in some instances, certainly. But there's also this problem of the stockholders who yep. are literally saying, where's my money? Where's my fucking money? It's And they've uh, got, you know, th- this this CEO has got, got to really... keep them happy as well as get a product out. And it, it becomes middle ground between keeping the stockholders happy and the customers happy. Yep. It's... Wow. Uh, wow. He, I've got a really good Canadian apoc- apocryphal. Actually, I don't think it's apocryphal. I think it's real story about this. Um, you got have, has everyone here heard of the instant pot? Yeah, of course. Excuse everyone, me. Everyone here probably has an instant pot. It's it's no? um. Okay. I don't it's know very if popular how, here. I don't know how big it is in in the UK or in Europe, but it's it's basically a programmable pressure cooker. It's an easy programmable pressure cooker for fast it's great i've got one right everyone's got one but what happened is they went public they were doing well but they never got more money they didn't go up 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 and shareholders rebel and then eventually they had to declare bankruptcy because they weren't making more every year and it's always this we have to make more 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 a company doing a baseline isn't enough. And that's a big problem because that's actually pushing the industry towards, oh, we've got to go higher. We've got to do more AAA. we got to do this and this. And look at the biggest fucking game of the year, Power World. It's like not even a B fucking game put together by like 30 fucking idiots who didn't know how to fucking code games. And it's sold more than fucking sliced bread. Like, gamers don't give a shit about your ideas on how what we want we want what we want and stop trying to like live service us and but like how world fantastic no microtransactions no dlc you buy it it's bought in shrouded love it buy it it's bought baldur's gate 3 buy it it's bought 
right? And they could have made a fucking killing if that game if they if they had put any microtransactions in it. Yeah. <clears throat> I I will so Halo two games. Um Dark Tide. Uh-huh. I really like it. Great combat, great soundtrack. Shiver, have you listened to the Dark Tide soundtrack? Because you should. No. You should. It's good metal. Like, it's some good fucking metal. Dark Tide soundtrack. Anyway, really good, but fucking broken. <laughs> it's a fucking broken, uh, like, oh, you want a new skin? Yeah, that's $10 for a set of armor, minimum. Oh, Wow. Yeah, we we did a they did a collaboration with um Rogue Trader where all of the Rogue Trader skins in Dark Tide were more expensive than Rogue Trader. <laughs> right? Fucking bullshit. And then <laughs> like horrible. That's Helldivers horrible. 2 just came out. There was there was a bit of an uproar when it was announced that they were going to have a bunch of different shops. Helldivers 2 has come out. They do have a cash shop. The cash is earnable in-game, findable in matches. You can find the like special money in matches, and you can earn it through war bonds and blah, blah, blah. Or you can buy it. But the cost to buy a new set of armor on it is like a buck. If you want okay. to spend a buck to buy a new set of armor, you can spend like that has always been my that's always been my my stance on it because I don't mind that as much. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the because like, there are games there are legitimately games where I've been like yeah I like this game enough I wouldn't mind buying something just yeah. for fun. But then you go and look what they want, like, and they're like, oh, I want $20 from you for anything. And it's like, that's no. more than the game cost me. Yeah. No, I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to do that. Why? Why not? Why? I mean, I know why not, because they've done the math and it actually, they do make more money if they make everything yeah. fucking expensive. But I think that they would get broader global I... acceptance of microtransactions if they were dirt cheap. I think they've done that math wrong because, and I've sold, told this story many times, but Puzzle Pirates. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. We, Commander we've, Lama. We've heard the Puzzle so Pirates story on this stream. We've heard the Puzzle Pirates story. <laughs> I'm sorry. You sell stuff cheap, cheap. You'll sell more of it. I, I am much more likely to spend five bucks if I can buy like five sets of armor than 10 bucks to buy one. In fact, I in already fact, put in another. I put in another 10 bucks because I was like, you know what? I like the numbers that you're showing me here. I'm going to buy 10 bucks of your currency, even though I can earn it in game. Mm -hmm. Thank you for which actually. Is also, which is also a nice move. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, uh, tip. Even Star Citizen's model isn't FOMO. Like there shouldn't be any FOMO because everything can basically everything can be found in uh, in game. It's it's delayed. I mean, people people get FOMO anyway, even though they. I know, can. Mm. I know. There there is there is there is most definitely um, FOMO with the war bonds, lifetime insurance, and all that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, I, but, but, I. That's like that's this thing that has plagued the community since day one, and it doesn't fucking matter because the insurance is in our time. It's in um, one year of insurance will last you the entire time you play the game. Just no. Ah! Anyway, I I can't explain it. People see lifetime insurance; they like that. They like that wording. I know it's great wording. It's like it's like you know when they um. I'm getting an echo here. I get a little bit of echo from Shiver, I think, or is it from me? A shiver is echoing. That's I, I will adjust my sensitivity and be less sensitive. You lost it. <laughs> Sorry, I, it's not happening anymore. No, it's good. That was weird. It's that only was weird. sometimes that's weird. Anyway, um, anyway, uh, sorry. 
Uh, what was the? Oh wow, I just lost my thought. Um, what were you talking FOMO, about? FOMO and insurance. FOMO and insurance. Um, oh right. Um, I, my my dad always talks about this because he used to work in uh, he used to uh, work in a grocery store for a long time, and um, but he he the thing that always bothered the hell out of him is when they started putting like fat free on products that never had fat ever to begin with. It, it's never had on, fat. Gluten free on things that have never had gluten. Yeah, Why? they just Why like you... slap a whole bunch of labels on there, and none of them even mean any. Like they don't really mean anything because those products never yeah. contain those things to begin with. <laughs> It's yeah. like it's it's that's um, actually that is a tell. full thing of study that I'm actually involved in because eco labels and like product yeah. labeling as a thing there have to be regulations on the products the 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 labels you can actually put on products because there's a lot of labels that people are putting on products that mean that literally bullshit. nothing but people yeah. are more likely to buy it because it says certified eco what does that mean you look into it oh it means literally nothing mm -hmm. but the but companies are allowed to slap it on yep right there's no anyway uh god we're being really like activists today in our discussions yeah, fine. i was um, i thought we were being curmudgeons i was enjoying it through, Shit. Our, through our very through our various um activism and curmudgeon I sure that's a word maybe. Um, we managed to get up to ten viewers. Thank you for everybody who's here. Hey, um, I, the other Quick, thing, put an I... eco-friendly stamp on the uh, backdrop. <laughs> yeah, we'll get an extra couple. Relay, relay. The most eco-friendly <laughs> podcast. So the the most environmentally friendly Star Citizen podcast. I love it. We can stick more labels on there. You got to make it flashy though. It can't just be. You can't put it in like small text. <sighs> I can't actually put I'm that not, though. I'm Aaron's not sure. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure we can do that because I mean, like, I buy a lot of plastic. <laughs> yeah, but but that's not part of this podcast. This po that's my okay, David. You make, up for, you, make, you make up for the rest of us by like forty-seven <laughs> times. You're fine. It's true. I do. Um... <laughs> there we go. I made it part of the podcast. Fucked you up. <laughs> you. Um, <laughs> Wait, do things... I get tax discount now? Games Workshop, give me free things. They never give anyone free things. I just heard no. about a like a Chinese TikToker that shows off products for three seconds each and made something like eighteen million dollars. Literally, she's just standing there, holds up a shirt, throws holds up this, throws it, holds up this. Like there's someone on either side of her throwing boxes to her. She opens the box, shows it, throws it. Opens the box, shows it, throws it. Eighteen million dollars she made in a week of doing this. Anyway, that's... I'll do that for one million dollars. <laughs> and, and I'll do it wearing only my pants. Well, that's good, because... If you want, I don't have wearing. to wear just my pants. I can put more on. It's entirely up to you. You're paying me a million quid. I'll do anything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. A million quid. A million quid's a million quid. I'm not gay, but, you know... A million no, quid. Good. Um... So LTI. Man, I Jesus Christ. Christ. She, she she basically worked for she worked she worked for one week and she could just hang it up. She's done. Doesn't need to ever work again. Yeah. So <laughs> LTI. I've got I I do have some things to say about LTI. I've got a question. Because being the longest running Star Citizen podcast, this is one of those things that I have stuck in my head as They've said this before many times, but I don't know if they've changed what they're saying on this. So bear with me. And I apologize if I'm wrong and someone please correct me, but my understanding of LTI was that LTI covers the base model of your ship. If you go and upgrade the engines and upgrade the weapons That's and upgrade true. all the components, guess fucking what? That shit ain't covered. And and as I was told by a number of people, starter ships are trash and you have to upgrade them if you want to go at any decent speed and things like LTI. Like if you want any speed or power or anything, you're going to have to upgrade your ship anyway. So really what the fuck's the point of LTI and why does everyone give a shit? God, it's only been 25 minutes. 
We're at an hour. Almost. No, it was 25 minutes since you said it's been half an hour. Oh, <laughs> that's fair. So I, like, I'll admit that a lot of my ships are LTI, just because when they come out with an LTI token, it's easy to grab one and move it over. But I've, I, but that said, I've got, like, three or four ships that aren't LTI, and I'm not in some, like, tizzy to go and turn them into it. Just so happens that I buy the ships at concept because, uh, you know, when they show it off, it looks cool. <laughs> I've got a ship problem, not an LTI problem. Oh There's my difference. god! You've literally difference. just sat there and said, oh, FOMO is not much of a thing, and then just individualize your FOMO. No, no, it's not FOMO. <laughs> it fucking is! That is no. full on FOMO! No, 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 it's not FOMO of LTI. Different thing. Jesus, Christ. you're like you're like my friend. He bought this fucking book on Stockholm syndrome. First day he got it, he said I don't like it. End of the week, he said I'm quite attached to it now. Funnily enough, uh, there's a growing nothing. Research that, come on, there are so few yeah, Stockholm syndrome jokes out there. Come on, that was a good one. Yeah, but funnily enough, I was reading recently that Stockholm syndrome might actually not exist, and it might be fraudulent research done by the person that invented Stockholm syndrome, and uh, it's not actually real. Thank you, Tip. Did you know that um, uh, shit? What was it called? Hysteria. Um, it, the, the whole reason that a lot of people think that we have dildos is because of hysteria in Victorian ages of doctors giving mm-hmm. women orgasms for hysteria it's all bullshit oh, it's all, complete, all complete bullshit because it was all done all of that is all based on one research paper done by some woman a few years back who never credited anyone who never did any research she just wrote it down and everyone was like shit is that real i'm gonna say that's real that's also, how we, we got dildos women were frustrated in the victorian like, age we also have they dildos weren't. that are like Fifty thousand years old yeah yeah some of our some yeah. of the oldest yeah. thing we have are yeah. dildos um yeah a review of the literature on Stockholm Syndrome found that most oh, diagnoses Miami. were made by the media, not psychologists or psychiatrists. It was poorly researched, and that there was scant academic research on it that could even agree what the syndrome was, let it known how to diagnose it. Um, it's a myth invented to discredit women victims of violence, um, and there's actually a lot of uh, suggestion that it was. Um, it's basically used by the police to discredit women who have been whoa what whoa 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 what i'm yeah. sorry i uh, what the who what why what that's i did not know that was a thing what the fuck i yeah. just the only thing i know about stockholm syndrome is that the only case was that a uh, woman who was kidnapped and ended up joining the gang and ended up joining uh robbing people or something i think that was the 70s that's the only thing i know about stock i did not know it was that's horrible what Uh, is wrong with the fucking world stockholm syndrome was a term foisted on a woman by a psychiatrist who had never met her or studied her or interviewed her stockholm syndrome is absolutely not real probably like anyway it's something to to Look into that on your own time. Uh, but seriously, there's there's a lot of interesting research doing being happening in the last, you know, Did you decade, know but it's research that, that feminism Stockholm's... Feminism was invented by a man in order to make money. It's a product of capitalism. Everything's a product of capitalism. Really is a product of capitalism. Uh speaking Ironically, of capitalism. Yeah. It actually speak... is, yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Speaking of capitalism, I'm going to move us over to show and tell. Give me a moment to select the right clips because... Thankfully, we're really bad at capitalism. (laughs) so fucking bad at capitalism. I hope that hurts so much, I forgot that. Look, Relay has been running at a loss uh, since we founded it. Actually, no. Early on in Relay, we actually had a net positive. Um, We haven't in a while. That's fine. We're oh, good. I know. What are we paying to run this shit? You pay money to run this? Yes. <laughs> the stream? <laughs> no, but other, like, all the 
There's, there's oh, a bunch right. Of as long as it's on the stream, things. then that's fine. Okay, well, that we're makes we're sense. For Twitch. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I was like, what? No. <laughs> no, we were. We, we, we just hear like let's, you pay let's money talk, for this quality of content. <laughs> let's talk about branding yeah. and stuff. Let's talk about stuff. branding and capitalism. Uh, also, Yay. yes, time, man. The amount of you could probably actually count, do the math on the amount of time that we've been doing this since we're at nine years, and we've missed. I'm gonna say conservatively, we've missed like half a year of shows in nine years so we've got eight and a half what more way more than that sunny jim so let's say we've let's say we've done 400 shows in four years in eight years 400 shows at an hour and a half each show yeah holy fuck that's we're starting on Twitch at exactly 1.30 a.m. Traveling at the speed of light over the internet. <laughs> Meanwhile, across the world, someone else is logging into Star Citizen on a dial-up account. Hang on, I can do this math because there's 2,000 work hours in a calendar year. And we're make, we've done 600 hours of this at my work like my my job rate if we've and we've put in more than 600 hours i'm gonna say conservatively that between transcripts and everything we put in i'm saying we were hours. i was saying we were live for yeah we're hours. live for 600 hours um, we've been we oh dude i i was working 40 hours a week on this yeah. for several for several years Yes. Um, so thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. It's yeah, unreal. but then, then, then it went public, and everything went a bit shit after that. <laughs> we have to play bankruptcy soon. They're always, they're always chasing those month, quarterly profits. I'm, I'm going to conservatively estimate that mm. I we shouldn't put have put in, out those pressure cookers. That was the problem. I'm going to conservatively estimate that I have put two hundred thousand dollars of my time into Star Citizen. That's that's that's, a lot. that's the number that's the number I'm putting out there. It's the number I'm sticking cool. to. I put two hundred thousand dollars. You sell yourself cheap. My... You say <laughs> I'm I'm a piece of shit. You know, on the whole hierarchy of things, I'm near the bottom. All right, you know, I'm just above cancer as far as the hierarchy on the planet goes, and I'd value yeah. myself more than that. I'd be like that's. Five million dollars of my time, you know. That's, Why the fuck uh, not? Valuing your time. How much do you value it? Infinitely. Of my time. Uh, I expect payment immediately. <laughs> so, um, uh, speaking so. of payment, branding. Yes. Oh shit! I had a no. Wait, I've got a good one. So, with with that in mind, considering we've now been uh, relay for nine years, what's the uh, What's the origin story this week? Oh dear! Wow, that was really bad. <laughs> you know there there is a uh, well. I'm not. Story. I'm not giving you back your ten quid that you paid me for that though. Oh, that's good. Fair enough. Uh, there is a whole story oh. behind Relay's branding. That was like a concerted like week or two <laughs> of like. Focused. We had, we had so much trouble coming up with the name. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> and by the end of it, you were all just like, "So is everyone in agreement?" And I was just like, "I don't give a fuck anymore at this point." <laughs> <laughs> Relay Origins coming this fall. I love it. I still like our logo, oh, but um. Oh, me too. So, once we found a name, the rest of it wasn't that hard. Yeah. <laughs> and we managed to get. Anyway, that's that's a whole thing. So branding, uh, I I thought this episode was actually really interesting. I found it. So the main guy that was talking in this week's episode should be used as a lesson in diplomacy, because if you listen to the words that he's saying, he's clearly thought about those words. He's like. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact, um, you know, 
Oh, how long to choose the music? The music that took a bit. Fast. Oh, well, I thought it was, what? I thought it was pretty fast. Because Jake chose Oh, it. no, yeah, we, yeah, Jake, like, found the one, was it, I don't know. Anyway, it's been I too think many Jake, years, Jake, I don't actually Jake remember. showed us, like, three or four, but I think, he, I don't think it took ter terribly long to find music. No, I didn't. The music's fucking great. That's what you said at the time, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, I found this episode really interesting and, and what the guy was saying really interesting. This is not at all what he said, because I don't remember word for word what he said, but it was something along the lines of, like, you know, I came in, you know, uh, two years ago to do this branding thing, and, and you know, there had been lots of interesting ideas and you know there were lots of different interpretations and i had to you know sort of uh you know grab the interpretations and try and unify them um in a way that you know was was cognizant of the history of you know what what was there and what the the ship makers were for and like he was very diplomatically saying Everything was shit and all over the place, and there was no fucking standardization, and there were 18 different fucking Drake logos, and I had to come in and make just one fucking Drake logo because no company has 18 fucking logos with different fucking colors, and why the fuck did Crusader have red on their ships and red on their logo and yellow on some other logo and in here and there was just no fucking anything it was fucking insane and i'm a fucking madman and i fucking did it and it's unified there you fucking go that's what he was trying to say but he did it very yep. diplomatically that's pretty much exactly what he's trying to say <sighs> companies do rebrand over many years you're absolutely right mud trucker and again this is one of the things that cig could really latch on to and do something with. I would really like the idea of like finding old stuff with old logos on it. I, I'm going to take the freelancer again because it's one of my favorite things to talk about. <laughs> it's the our only subject of conversation. <laughs> no, no, but seriously. <laughs> points. Here we go. Here we go. The freelancer is shit. My truck is ready. <laughs> No, no, no. You wait, wait and see where I'm going with this, okay? I don't. I I guesstimate that y'all y'all don't y'all don't have a clue. Um, the freelancer is shit. You're what? Canadian. Stop using y'all. Come on. No, I like I like y'all. <laughs> nope, you can't use it. <laughs> use whatever the fuck I want. I'm Canadian. The freelancer shit. It's not going to get fixed. They're not going to. So what they should do, we I they need to bring it up to you know the, the the component standard as part of the components rework, and then you know what? Fuck it. Just leave the freelancer for a couple of years. But in in the lore of Star Citizen, when was the actual like uh fucking Genesis? of the freelancer when did it actually first enter the scene because what they should genesis do... is planet forbidden i knew i shouldn't have used that word um no i'm miami i'm not even talking about the version that i like here honestly this is something else what i would really like them to do well yeah what what Mudtrucka says, like, you've got your old model freelancer, and I'd like them in, like, two or three years to do a new model freelancer. It's the 2955 freelancer, and it's all new, and you've got the old ones in the verse. They're flyable. They're usable because they've, they've done the component pass. It's a usable ship, but you've also got the 2955 with the wings that actually rotate, you know, with, with quick punch action, kapow, you know, karate grip action. Like, yeah. I know I look, the design I like is yeah. the design. I like is more interesting. What I would like 
beyond the design, honestly, is just a workable freelancer. One that makes sense for the job the ship is supposed to do. One that has a cockpit that you can see out of. That'd be nice. You know, it's the freelancer is the worst cockpit in the game. Bar none. Yep. And, it, and, and even worse, it's better than it used to be. <laughs> Which is terrible. It's the worst oh. cockpit in the game. And I want them to fix it. I just I just want a ship that you can fly. So, about that branding. Yeah, branding. But this is this is something that would be interesting for branding because if they've changed Misk's branding, it would be interesting for all of the old Misk ships to keep old Misk branding. Like they shouldn't Yep. Totally. They shouldn't actually get rid of all of the old branding. Like, old Drake ships should actually have old Drake branding. It should... Yep. It would be really... I don't... I honestly... I think it's a cool thing. I think it's a cool thing, and I think I think it's easy to do. All it is is a texture. Like, it's just... It's not... It's a nothing thing, so... <sighs> Got him! <laughs> Find that hard to swallow. Oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, All right. You know, it I just... want to ask. Yeah, go. In this clip, what's your favorite branding? Does it have to be like whatever, whatever you think is the best? Um, I don't like Meat Eye. I don't like Meat Eye's branding. Okay, why not? I it I don't know, it doesn't scream meat eye to me. Like the the logo doesn't what, Shiver? I, I the logo doesn't scream me right to you, but it's it's literally fucking Genji. I don't like no no, not that logo. The like the three it's like there's a circle and then there's three squares coming off the circle. I don't like it. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I'm supposed to start when we get raided, right? I mean... I'm so glad it was now at least. Jesus Christ, we've been doing some shit. I've been <laughs> saying <laughs> some shit. I've been saying some shit. Hey, hey, Astro Pub. Welcome, and, everybody. And everyone that comes with that. Um, welcome. Oh, God, I can't believe I have to do this. Uh, welcome to the longest running Star Citizen podcast. Uh, we uh, suck. And um, I apologize that you're being sent to us to listen to us. Uh, I'll, I say hi to Fast Cart. Um, Hello, Master. Of course, it would be Fast Cart. That, that explains it all. Captain's Table Raid. You know. Twice in two weeks. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we heard better. that. We heard that rumor that I just made up as well about Astro earlier. Mm. That's true. We were <laughs> actually talking <laughs> about <laughs> that you just made up. <laughs> we were talking about Astro earlier. So uh, it's, it's nice yeah. to see you all. Hello. Um, we're talking about branding. Um, yeah, and how branding is is interesting and important. It's interesting and important, and very well, actually very important. Um, but most people don't really appreciate it very much. Like they don't really realize it's one of those things that sort of fades into the background of most games. But if it wasn't there, it would feel weird. I, I mean, it, it's like that in real life, though, isn't it? You, you're not. When when you're in a new place, you don't look around and go, oh, "There's ad, but there's ad." But you you just sort of subtly recognize, "Oh, that's the Coca Cola logo, and that's that logo, and that's that logo," and it, it almost yeah. becomes like second nature to you. And that that's that's the point of branding is being able to go, "There's the Pepsi, there's the Coke. I want the Pepsi," or yeah, you know, just yeah. yeah, instant recognition is the point of the branding. It's funny too because if you think of like a, a world without branding, you like walk into a grocery store and everything is just white boxes with no label on them. <laughs> just, mm, mm. It would be weird. 
Oh. Carrots. <laughs> I like that coffee. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! I really like the Elroy's logo, the coffee shop in in uh, Star Citizen. In this clip, I've always really, I, really liked. I would actually remember love the, a world I, without branding, but I it's the burgers. I'm I'm in, I'm in love with the burgers. It's been a while since I've had a decent burger. I'm not gonna lie, but it's the burgers. The Whammers logo. Yeah, it's a look, really good look. It looks clean as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. There's a yeah, lot know, of really it's, it's, um, Go ahead. Well, I was going to say to to everyone that just joined us, it's slightly uh, unfortunate you came like five minutes too late because we were having a really interesting discussion about <laughs> branding history. No, no, I think that was actually really like that was good. The the history of branding and like. The idea that CIG and Star Citizen could keep historical logos for yeah. older ships. Oh, I, yeah, that part. Hey, yeah, absolutely. Eric, well, was, it, was, was Eric on a different podcast to the one I was on when he's talking about that? <laughs> no, I it's that. not what he's talking about. Yes, um, I would I would definitely like for when they update branding for if you're flying something that's old, it, I, I would be cool if it had an old logo on it. Um, well, it just also makes, some of the derelicts. It, yeah, absolutely derelicts. Um, and it just again, just like lack of branding feels it makes the world feel kind of empty and bland. Um, if you have those like multi layers of branding, it it gives the world a feeling a uh, world a feeling of uh, history and and depth. You know. We we're like, oh, you know, I know right away. This is an old freelancer. Even if the one that they're making now is exactly the same, if they change the logo on it, this is an old freelancer because it has the old logo on it. You know what it's like? You know how early in the show we were talking very briefly about McDonald's and how McDonald's has gone from like bright and colorful to br bright and colorful to brown and shitty. But it's like if you went, if you go now to the world, yeah, you can see the outside of the restaurants too. <laughs> If you go now to the world's <laughs> longest running McDonald's, it's got a single arch. It has like it has none of the branding that you would associate with modern day McDonald's. Yeah. And that's actually really interesting. It's the history of the branding of this company. Actually, uh, oh, wow. I went to the go ahead. I'll I'll just quickly say the the Fallout series is a fantastic example of that i think for me because i love to spend hours reading on the wiki about fucking nuka cola and how the guy was trying to live forever and it's like that has no impact whatsoever on any of the game but it's in there and you can learn it and it's pretty cool and interesting learning alternate histories they actually do a really good job in in the fallout games of putting a, like a lot of little lore bits in all over the place i um, i would also say i would like CIG have done this before. They've done it once before. AMD is canonically a company yep. in Star Citizen. It is a canonical Star Citizen company. Honestly, I... Um, fuck, there was some, like, actor or musician years ago that was trying to put together a company that would do this, and I don't know if it ever succeeded, but I thought it was a really interesting idea of placing company ads in video games that make sense for the video game like yeah. Yeah. like um that makes uh, sense. Oh, fuck. when was coke founded oh coca-cola late was 19th century 1886 Ooh, nailed it and i thought like at the time i was thinking like okay you know what a coca-cola ad in a World War II video game would make sense. You could put, if you made it historical, like if you found the old logos that would have been around at the time and put that in, that would be like proper 
advertising. It's, it's funny you say that because this this also harkens back to something I was talking about earlier, where the rest of the industry just shits on video games. Because if you do that in a movie, let's say let's say Steven Spielberg, Steven Spielberg's the best bit. There was a fucking war over what the alien, what those kids were going to fucking eat yep. the sweets. Yep. There was a fucking war over that. They paid that man. They paid oh, him. They paid the studios. However, in a game, company making a game has to license from a company. Yeah. Arguably, that game's reaching more people and advertising to way more people. Guy that is just he's just sat there fucking on his pile of money. He's got everything. But it's, that's why it, games are not respected. Even but for that's that what platform. CIG did with AMD. And AMD paid CIG to put AMD mm. in the verse, right? Yep. And that's what C like I think CIG actually have a huge chance to push that because if if things pan out if if star citizen becomes the game that we are all hoping all of us are hoping it's actually going to become and you know the lifespan of it and the up uh, like the the significance of it then maybe cig can do that but i was thinking like take it back from cig there's there's other massive companies that could do this like Call of Duty is understood oh, yeah. as a gaming icon. Call of Duty should be reaching out to companies and be like, hey, Coca-Cola, do you want us to put Coca-Cola, his a period accurate Coca-Cola logo in our next Call of Duty? Because Coca-Cola, I guarantee you, Coca-Cola has a historical division that has all of the like the oh, logos yeah, yeah, yeah. that were used then that they could Absolutely. just hand over. Someone else who's older than me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I, there's a possible... Right, I'll get to it first. I, BF2142, I specifically remember EA uh, went through this whole thing of trying to find licenses to advertising game, and it, for a while they had Barclays Bank advertising. And I don't know if that was a third party thing, but I specifically remember a couple of maps where there was like massive billboards on these maps like, just for Barclays Bank. And you're like, wow, you missed the mark. You missed the mark so much. <laughs> but, well, that's, yeah, a, that's, what we're, say... that's what we're saying. Is you have to, hmm. it, it won't work if it doesn't make sense in the game world. It needs to yeah. make sense in the game world. It and can't stand it, out. Yeah, no. And, and, and that, it's funny because actually me and my uh, one of my friends were watching a TV show recently and uh, it was like the final season of the TV show and they obviously took this big advertisement deal with, with this company, with Tylenol actually. It was really funny because they really, they kind of misplaced the ad. They made them like really, really obvious. And it was funny because like every every episode we're laughing our asses off about the like blatant advertising of Tylenol in every episode. <laughs> it's like... That's not the right way to do that, you know. <laughs> I, Shem Pastor, you're right. They would need to add it to lore, and that's actually what they did with AMD. They created Accelerated Mass Design, which is its own company in the game. But there's a lot of com like CIG's lore goes back before us, before now, right? Like they've got the lore planned out so these companies already exist in lore hey griff. hey griff uh really all they have to actually do is carry the lore forward right because yep. coca-cola <laughs> exists right now how do we carry the lore of coca-cola forward to what they are yep. 900 years from now that is interesting um you know it'd be yeah, really like, fun too like some some companies can have a lot of fun with this too because um was it Samsung that started as an open air food market? Um like it you know yeah Nintendo yeah, started sold... as a trading card company. Yeah, so you can even have like a lot of fun with this as a as a company and be <laughs> like, Yeah, sure, we make Coca Cola now, but really in twenty nine thirty four Coca Cola <laughs> makes tanks, you know, like you could. <laughs> And, th and that would be interesting, yeah. right? Like, can you imagine Coca-Cola going to CIG and be like, hey, we're going to give you, you know, $5 million. Uh, can we put 
a racing bike in the game because in 2955, Coca-Cola is an energy drink company and we sponsor and like pay for racers. And we want like a racing ship done by our company. I like it. Yeah. Like, I like it. We've, we've solved all Yamaha, the world's problems. Yamaha does from motorbikes to pianos. Like, fuck. Yeah, it's... The, there's some really hard to Most bikes, pianos, air conditioners, guitars, <laughs> synthesizers, hair dryers. Sorry, sorry. Uh, In 2955, Coke makes Pepsi. I like that. <laughs> that would be hilarious. I like that. That's beautiful. Um, the ultimate, the ultimate takeover. Hostile takeover. The one, the one thing I will say, the one caveat I will put to this is there is a problem in video games that video games last a lot longer than other media in that once it's put up for download it should in theory be up for download forever and i can't remember the name of the game right now i think it's a it's like um iraq afghanistan war game uh desert something um really good game but it was actually just delisted from steam because a bunch of licenses expire and that's something that needs to be looked at in the future for video games that these licenses this like 10-year license on a soundtrack i think they had some like some oh, sound some some soundtrack use in their main menu and in their game that they lost the license for they lost the license for because they only had a 10-year license or whatever um most movies do it by not having a a limitation on the number of years that it's licensed for you don't license it it. that's the way video games need to start doing it um like if if, you realize that they're perpetual (laughs) yeah if cig make a i'm using coca-cola here a lot for some reason i don't know why but if uh i'm gonna choose something else if if cig make a deal with um pepperidge farm goldfish and you so i i wanted to go with pepperidge farm goldfish and you so rosiole de saveur I'll meet you halfway, Vagisil. All right. If CIG yeah. want to make a in-game deal with Vagisil, that Vagisil now make uh, industrial tankers to ferry fuel <laughs> across the verse. I love it. Then that needs to be in perpetuity. It can't be like an mm. X number of year license. It has to be this is in the game. This is it. It's continuing. And you might not continue the partnership to make new things but whatever you put in would have to be there See, if i was going to put if i was going to put vagisil in i'd make them a thrush metal band oh god that's a good one i well done uh no Ooh. if john deere if john deere is in star citizen they should be making what would be appropriate for John Deere? No, they should be making all of the office chairs. All of the Perfect. office chairs you find in, in like buildings in Star Citizen. John Deere have very comfortable seats. There you go. They need to they make look, office chairs. They're like, screw the actual like rest of the machine. We're just going to make the seat. Well, the, the rest of their machine is actually horrible because it's all fucking proprietary and no one's allowed to repair it. You have to get a John Deere technician to come in and repair it or you avoid your fucking warranties. They're fucking bastards yeah, for but that. That's not, it's but, not, that's not a reason for the company to not like the, the thing that they're making. No, they're no, but fine that's, a reason for, that's a reason for the company to fail as a company and only survive now they by only making make office chairs. chairs. And, and what's great is they have to write this into their lore, and then they can look backwards on the lore that they created for Star Citizen and say, shit, we should change our ways and stop being such money grubbing pricks. Yeah, that'll happen. Y'all. Jesus Christ. Did, uh, did I was, I I've never seen a it. human being actually look like Popeye before. <laughs> I do love spinach. Oh, man. 
Welcome, been watching welcome this video to. For a while. Are there any other videos? No. Uh, oh yeah, there are. Fuck. <laughs> I Fuck was me. wondering because I'm like, I don't think this is the whole episode. <laughs> Sorry, I got just <laughs> fucking <laughs> zoned in on y'all's. Um, the superfluous y'all. I love it. Can- that uh, like- Can- Canadians can only do y'all superflu- superfluously because it's not ours. <laughs> I you know what the super the superfluous y'alls sounds like a band name for like a avant garde like banjo alternative synth band Love the it. alternative or the superfluous y'alls. <laughs> look you got those Jimmer. fucking Drake logos. Look at those fucking Drake logos. Oh, um, look! Banjo is a great instrument. I don't fucking care. So is the fucking. I want to say, oh, fuck. I was gonna say banjo. saxophone, but it's not the saxophone. It's the <laughs> bagpipes. Oh. The bagpipes. Bagpipes are an excellent instrument as well. I just fucked How do you go from saxophone to? Bagpipes, especially Look, with that that version of the mime. Because thirty minutes before this show, I was asleep because I had an anxiety attack at a party and got home and passed out. And I woke up. Here. Well, that's your own fault for going to a fucking party and trying was... to enjoy life. Be miserable like the rest of us and wait for oh, no, death like me, a miserable. fucking human being with dignity. <laughs> um, out on the porch, gun in hand. Yep. I'm going out the way I came in, kicking and can screaming. I, can I say that I don't like the blue of Crusader? You can't say that, no. I don't like it. I don't actually think that that blue fits Crusader. Ben. You should you should write an official uh, complaint letter to CIG. You know what Crusader screams to me? I love Crusader ships. I think they're some of the best looking ships in the verse. But to Gun me... Metal. To, no. Beige. They're sad beige ships for sad beige children. Oh my god. <laughs> they're like they're they're the trendy children. ships. Why are the people, children bay? They're the they're trendy <laughs> ships that people are trying to like oh be trendy, god. so they make them beige. And without realizing that everyone actually hates beige but because it's trendy everyone buys beige that's crusader actually no that's I actually, origin that's origin sorry. i do actually i do actually agree with you on the blue for crusader though i don't i don't love it that much i think that it could be better it could <clears throat> the problem is there's only so many colors and like you can't go orange there's only, 16, there's only like 17 million colors like goddamn no, but you can't do purple and slightly less green purple because they're yes, too close can. for the naked eye. No, they're too close for the naked eye. I love the clothed the eye has no problem. But then again, but, I love you know. everything about Gatag. I like oh, how they the other videos, or was this it for real? This is the no, second this, video. This, this is the second. There is more, um, right? Okay. Also, I still hate that fucking Kraken ship. I think that's one of the ugliest ships that CIG have designed to date. I hate Best it. Ship in the game. Hideous. I like uh, graffiti. It. It's. I like it too. It's very homeworld. I think. It's. I don't. I don't even think. Look. I hate Drake. Drake are shit. Drake are shit ships owned by shit people. Didn't mind everybody. David hates like seventy five percent of the ships in the game. Drake are shit ships owned by shit people, but even Drake ships have <laughs> standards, and the Kraken is below those standards. The Kraken needs to be like they need a new ship manufacturer for the Kraken. That's like. Poland. Our ships are poop. Chip Brown? Nice. Yeah. All right. Wait, wait, wait. 
What what happens to the poop deck? It's you know white. It. Pure white. <laughs> At every surface. Uh so we're looking oh. at the graffiti, graffiti and tattoos section here, and I had a question, because this is something that appears in many video games. Is yeah. honestly the ability to tag places, especially in FPSs, to tag the map with your a tag, right? To to spray paint a tag and like in in going back as far as I can remember in things like uh fucking Day of Defeat and Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, you could put in your own image, upload your own image to use as your spray, right? Yep. Um, and I don't think CIG will allow that, that because... It went, it, went, it went poorly in a big hurry. <laughs> yes, and I don't <laughs> think CIG will allow that because it'll go poorly in a very big fucking hurry. But do you think and, and but they show it actually at the very beginning of this episode the animation of someone spray painting on a wall do you think that they will allow us to spray in game sprays like will there be a selection of sprays that we can spray paint somewhere to tag as Maybe. as it were it would be really cool if there was a way to do that with like for your organization What's up, Shiv? I've had earthquake PTSD. Oh, I see. I thought I was about to have a really big earthquake. No, I was just my chair moving a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> how do, how does it feel? How does it feel living again on a slightly more solid landmass? Colder, with, with slightly fewer. Uh, ICBMs being launched at it and over it. Thanks for that reminder. I woke up to that fucking one of those fucking things flying literally right over the house one day. Oh, it's nuts. Well. It's nuts it's that like incredible. most people don't even know that the fucking happens. Honestly, like it's not. Well, yeah. you, you you can't imagine what that fucking thing sounds like it's it's like it's like well i'm supposed eric probably knows he's heard rockets but I, that is what i imagine it sounds like it's like a fucking rocket that just flies over your house you know like, oh, can't park that here mate <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man that's funny all right uh, we're... okay so back to the topic at hand yeah um Anything else you want to say about graffiti? Uh, I I hope that we're able to do graffiti of our own in certain spots, especially our own. Um, I think it'll allow us to customize our own locations a lot more. One of the things, so my wife and I play a lot of survival games right now. We're playing a shit ton of Enshrouded because Enshrouded honestly has the best base building system i've ever seen in a video game Interesting. Um, thank you for letting me know i will check it out enshrouded honestly the base building system is phenomenal like out of this fucking world well done um, now is this a is this a space game because that would have been a perfect it is joke. not it is not oh. unfortunately but um a very good game so far it's still in early access it well, just came out like well a week don't worry ago, you but... still managed to rock it Oh dear. Um, really like it, but and we know that base building at some point is coming to Star Citizen. But one of the important things about base building really is the ability to make it your own and to customize things. And as as I am at least right now understanding Star Citizen's base building, you're going to put down sort of prefab buildings that don't have much individuality from the other prefab buildings. So what they're they're honestly going to need to do is find ways for you to spruce up the interior to your own preferences through things like a shit ton of props. We need a shit ton of props to put in our buildings and also things like art 
graffiti. Let us make the place our own, because if you don't let us make the place our own, it doesn't feel like our own. Yeah, I agree. A hundred percent. Um, and this is, this is something they've actually talked about a lot in that, you know, they make like modular structures, but then there's many, they have many, 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 many different ways of set dressing them. And as yeah. long as they expose that ability to set dress an, an area to the players, I think it's, it'll be fine. Well, and that, that's the concern. Like, I, I know that they're using like, um, not AI, but they're doing a lot of set, set dressing automatically. Like there's a lot, they've showed us procedurally previously. Generated. Yes, yeah. thank you. Uh, they've showed us previously how they procedurally generate lots of set dressings for things like um, space stations. And then they go in and manually check that it makes sense, but they're procedurally generating a lot of these things. They also it's manually really... take a lot of it too. Like yes. it's not like the manual tools don't exist. No, it's hmm. just, we need the ability to manually place everything with a yep. lot of precision. You know, um, you know what would be better than I, I, I think would be the best is if we also got to use like a yep. procedural generation and be like, I want this theme, right? Like, oh, this is an yep. outlaw post. And then you could go in and from there move everything move things around, you know? Yep. Absolutely. Like anyway, sorry. Go ahead, Shiver. You were going to say something. I was going to say basically that. Hey. <laughs> sorry <laughs> for interrupting you, my friend. No, no, not so. It's a great idea. Well, we're seven minutes over, so I think we should let David go fall asleep again. Honestly, I'm not going to fall asleep again. I'm probably going to play a round of Helldivers 2 because I've I've had a nap. I'm awake now. and um, No, because I only play Enshrouded with Cass. Fair enough. We're building a... We're digging... We are hollowing out a mountain and building our base into the mountain. At the front, we've got like a... Like sort of a nice like hobbit house but it goes down into the mountain and spreads out and we've got all these different rooms that we're building and what's cool. in the hall of the mountain king uh right now uh not very much because we've only just started but um you know yes liberty do you know much about do you like the taste of democracy Okay, I see here. It's currently their goal to bring it out of early access within a year, which means it'll probably be two years. Yeah. That's not bad. It's it's honestly, so really quickly, and Shrouded's actually really thoroughly thought out. Like, Pal World is hitting all the charts right now. Very good, but honestly, a very incomplete game, and I think they're actually trying to staff up really quickly because... Oh, I imagine got... now that, they've, that they're this popular, they're trying to yeah. make stuff like crazy. Yeah, but Enshrouded is actually a better game in that yeah. it's got quests. It's got quests throughout the world that you find, and there's all these quests to go do, and the quests get you more things to craft. Like, it's it's a much more thought-out game. Um, and its base building is... In that, so it's like, it's like the blocks of Minecraft, right? Like, you place blocks... But imagine yep. if those blocks, as you place, you know, a series of blocks, like you've got six blocks that you've placed in a particular style, uh, wood, stone, tarred wood, um, whatever, the edges are all the same. Like it, it as you, it's really hard to explain, but it's a block-based system that's really interesting and really intricate and makes things look really fucking good. Um, as you build it, there there's like the inside looks one way and then the outside looks another way. So like the outside is... It's... Uh, if you're looking at wood planks... Right, so you've got wood planks for a floor. It's just a floor of wood planks. And at the end, the end blocks are all a plank laid the other way. So if you line them up, it's like, it looks nice. But then as you destroy some, it just moves that, the edge is always the edge. So you've got a lot of customizability on how you're building things and what you're building and how it looks. And it's, it's the most detailed base building system I've yet seen. I really like it for that, so... Intradable. Um, I'll take a look at Dungeonborn, Miami. Um, yeah. 
And it's it's also I will I will point out that it is Steam's next fest right now, which is all of their fucking demos, which is a great time to try new demos. Um just tons of demos, which are really nice. Okay. Uh this is about we're way fucking over time. I really apologize. Sure. It's very late for you over there, or early for you over there. What do you got going on this week? Smell time. Um just Vampire Masquerade coming up on I suppose you'd call it Friday going into Saturday morning, eleven thirty UTC over on twitch.tv slash table of horrors. Uh tune on in. If, even if you're not interested in TTRPGs, we still have a giggle. <laughs> Always. A few Always giggle. Yeah. Uh, and that's it for us. Uh, yeah, thank you all for joining us. Uh, thanks again to the Astropub for rating us. Thanks to all of you who stuck around and listened to us bullshit for a while. Uh, please, come back next week. We do this the same time every week. Um, sometimes we even stick to the topics that we pick and actually talk about it. But we are... The longest running Star Citizen podcast. I need to do like a welcome yep. to the world's longest Star Citizen podcast. We've been running consecutively for nine years. And, and in those nine stop. years, we've said three things of interest. <laughs> anyway, uh, two of them were about boobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh love you all stay safe stay healthy remember that uh climate change is a real thing and it's very quickly fucking up our entire globe and we are not ready for it uh just you know have a great weekend everybody. Nightmare. have a great weekend <laughs>